There's an inherent virtue in being able to fight for your beliefs. The ancient philosophers we tend to base our modern systems of thought on were known to be a scrappy bunch. The level of violence and frequency with which they were prone to may be shocking to some who only know them for their quotes on social media. The reason for their militant attitude was because if you were to win a fight against a rival, you weren't just winning the fight, you were also demonstrating that the principles you live by have made you into a more effective and virile man. In the modern era, we've removed the importance placed on being able to stand up physically for your beliefs and replaced it with a faux civility that's truly just covert manipulation and mind games in disguise. What we've mistaken for logic and reasoning are actually just vain attempts to convince someone to go along with what we want, even if it's against their best interest. If they don't say yes, we double down on the manipulation or even resort to coercion and half-measure violence. If those don't work, then depending on the circumstance, one may resort to using authority or even civil law as surrogates for violence. It is a million times better to physically fight for something that is wrong or immoral than it is to get your way through trickery, even if you are moral or correct. At least if you're standing for something wrong, you're still standing for something. You're giving the other man an opportunity to show that their way of life or thought is better than yours in a definitive and apparent manner. There is no cheating, corner cutting, weasley behavior, or gaslighting. There is no place to escalate to. After a debate, lawsuit, sporting event, or other, you can walk away telling yourself that your team could have beaten up the other team. After a fight, the person who loses cannot say the same, at least not in the moment. This is a stark contrast to those who kvetch for what are considered to be fair and moral ideals, as there is no manner of testing the mettle of those ideals. In addition to this, it's a classic case of the ends not justifying the means. If I have to manipulate or strong-arm someone into giving money to the poor via a new tax code, have I actually increased the amount of charity in the world, or have I just robbed someone of something they may not have been able to give up in the first place? I've not only robbed them, but I've also ignored any dissent and gaslit any dissenters on the ground of hearing what I wanted to hear and getting the outcome that I wanted. This is one way that weak men tend to be created, as it becomes much easier to live out ideals that are not conducive to a healthy and strong lifestyle. Additionally, it's much easier to act as a peanut gallery or ideas guy who talks about what's needed to fix the world without actually embodying those things himself. These men end up as degenerates who feel that they're experts in virtue, or faux tough guys who talk tough but respond with disgust when someone challenges them to a fight. The weak man, when confronted, will try to come back with statements of pacifism and say debate is the way to test ideals. This reaction seems to make sense at first glance, and in truth, there is nothing wrong with discourse. That being said, debates tend to be nothing more than two or more people screaming, interrupting, refusing to acknowledge accepted fact when it benefits them, or dancing around talking points that make them look bad while quadrupling down on ones they can use to make them look good. Just to name a few things. Because of this, it's typically a waste of time to argue with people after a certain point. It's prudent to abstain from arguments to keep from wasting away in chat rooms arguing points with someone who would deny that water is wet. People are not interested in being wrong or even listening to another viewpoint. They want to be correct, and they want you to shut up even if it means you have to accept the antithesis of truth and allow for something that does direct harm to you. As I was thinking about this, I realized that this is why I get so annoyed when I see a kung fu nerd or an out-of-shape baby boomer saying feel-good platitudes about respecting elders or behaving like a champion. There's nothing behind those words. They're just manipulative complaining. These people cannot fight for what they're saying. They would lose. Even if what they say has merit to it, you know they're not actually saying it because they live it. They're saying it because they heard it in a movie. Much of the time, these people don't actually adhere to those ideals, or any ideals at all. They just see something that they dislike, and they're attempting to nag someone else until whatever they have a problem with is changed. The hair that stands up on the back of your neck when you see a Facebook boomer shaming someone is an indicator of your awareness of this underlying truth, even if you cannot put a finger on it. The cringe is really a sixth sense about the person and their nature. When someone's just trying to seem wise and intelligent by spouting off some kind of fortune cookie philosophy, it rings the same as the annoying Reddit kid who takes any chance he can to list off weird and wacky science facts. You are inherently aware of tactics like this because you have an instinctual idea of right and wrong, as well as an understanding of real and fake. The chauvinism that exists within the people who use these words is sometimes enough to warrant a fight between two people, and the person using them is aware of this. And yet, our lawsuit-happy culture full of zero-tolerance policies and victim-blaming does not permit us to fight those who mistreat us in that way. 
Instead, we must be the perfect victim of someone who doesn't care for the rules and only uses them to unbalance the field. We have to allow ourselves to be stripped of dignity and even physically harmed for Big Brother to step in. And if Big Brother turns a blind eye to your victimization, then you're out of luck. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a bit different from what I would normally do in terms of style, but this was really the only way I could get the ideas out there in a clean manner. I will do more videos like this in the future, and it'll end up being mixed in with the usual content. For now, if you like this video, definitely leave a like and also subscribe for more, and if you have any thoughts, feel free to comment down below. You can also hit me up on Instagram, at Scott Sullivan MMA, if you have any questions or anything like that. Other than that, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, good luck out there.